Hello, everyone. Welcome to the I Am Avanti podcast. Um, this is your host, Indy, one of your hosts, Indy. Um, I am a counter staff person at Avanti. We are a piercing shop in Washington Square Mall. And basically, I help people pick out the jewelry that they want to adorn their bodies with. And we go through sizing, we go through aftercare and all that other stuff before we send them to the piercer and they get their new jewelry inserted. Today, for our first episode, me and my co-host, we're just going to go through our piercing history and um, the piercings that we've had and what our journey's been like and what it's been like for us working here. And the next episode, we'll be talking about the history of piercings and where piercings come from and how long people have been getting, been getting their bodies adorned. So yeah, thank you so much and stick around. So my first piercing that I've ever gotten, I was a baby and my mom took me to get my ears pierced. I don't know where she got it done um, because I was a child. And I can't remember that far back, but I've always had my ears pierced, um, and they're fully healed now, both my lobes, and now I just wear jewelry from everywhere. I don't really think about the quality or anything, but working here has taught me more about jewelry quality, because it was something I didn't really think was important until I interacted with people who had um, skin sensitivities, and I was able to see firsthand what happens when you go somewhere and pay seven dollars for earrings and put them in fresh piercings but luckily nothing like that happened to me with my uh, mind but now um i do use different types of materials Uh, my first facial piercing was when i was around about 15 or 16. Um, my mother and i were in colorado visiting her boyfriend at the time and we were going up the mountain i saw this like lonely piercing and tattoo shop up ahead and I looked at my mom and I was like, hey, I want to get my nose pierced. And it took her a couple seconds, but she was down. Um, So we went in and I got it done on my right nostril. And I had that one for a few months. Um, Going to school, going back to school after that was kind of hard because I wasn't allowed to have piercings piercings, um, in my face, even though plenty of my other colleagues and students had their own piercings but no one really said anything to them but they said stuff to me so I switched my jewelry constantly because I was always getting in trouble and always getting like stopped for it so I went from like retainers to uh like the screw-on types uh, at the ends like the elbow shapes to the like nose bones with little balls at the end like I've worn every type of jewelry around that time and I think eventually it got really irritated and I got this ugly keloid bump on it. So I took the joy out and let it close up. And then it wasn't until the very next year um, that I eventually got my nose re-pierced on the other side when I was around 17. And that's the piercing that I've had this entire time since then. Um, so it's going on 10 years with my nose pierced on the left side now. Um, and around 17, I got both my helix and belly button pierced at this shop in Houston. That's where I'm from. They were notorious for doing really cheap piercings, like two for 25, two for 30 uh, deals. And I went there with my mom again. And yeah, it was a really awkward experience because I originally asked to have my conch done. And instead they did my helix. And I also got my belly button pierced. And when I was getting my belly button pierced, I was standing up for it. I suppose that it was just like a flash piercing place and they just wanted to get people in and out really quickly. So they had me stand up for that, which was very, very hard and very difficult and hurt really, really bad. But I just wanted to get it done. I was young. I wasn't thinking. Of course, now that I'm older and more experienced, I would be like, "Um, can I please sit down for this or lay down? (laughs) Um, So before I went to college, when I was about 18 or 19, I got dermals under my collarbones. Those are really cool. Those are probably one of my favorite piercings. They looked great. Um, they end up they ended up rejecting once I got to school. It was probably from the stress and the lack of proper aftercare, which we'll probably talk about. Well, we will definitely talk about in another episode. I wasn't really taking care of them properly, so they started to reject. One came out, and then it was just awkward to just have one. Um, when there is a place obviously a place where another one belongs, so I just kind of let the other one reject and took that one out. 
after that, um, when I dropped out of college, I got my nipples pierced, and it was, like, the first piercing that I didn't really tell my mother about, so for me, that was kind of, like, solidifying my adulthood and just me doing something for myself. All my piercings were for myself, but this time I didn't really involve her in the process with, like, telling her, letting her know I just had them uh, randomly, and those were great. Uh, the healing was okay. The piercing hurt really, really bad. And I probably would still have them in if it wasn't for, um, for some reason, every time I drank Fireball, I would lose a piercing. So one night I drank it and one came out and it was again with the dermals. It's weird to just have one where there's obviously supposed to be two. Um, or I didn't really like the idea of having one. So I took it out and let that close up and I haven't really thought about getting them re-pierced. Um, I didn't get pierced for years after that. Um, not because I didn't like them, I just didn't really feel the need to until I started working here. Um, I started working here and I realized how much I really wanted to get my Fulcrum done. And once I started working at a piercing store, I was like, oh, this is a possibility for me now. Like, I can actually get this really cute, girly, fun piercing that I've always thought would look adorable on me. And so I finally did it and now I have it. I don't have any plans to get any more facial piercings but I do want to get my ear pierced uh, both ears I want more piercings other than the helix and the lobes that I have so those are going to be in my future and I'm not really sure about getting anything else done yet but yeah that was my little history with uh jewelry modification and piercings and now I work in this awesome shop and I get to help people on their journeys and it's really fulfilling you know you go home every day and you're like I just helped someone basically make over their face or make over their stomach or wherever they're getting their piercing and it's really transformative for them and also kind of for us because we get to think about what our individual individuality means to us as well thank you so much for your time hey there my name is Sim I am a fellow counter staff person here at Avanti My journey with piercing began when I was around 10 years old, just got my lobes pierced out of Claire's. I remember being really excited and looking forward to getting my ears pierced, but the actual experience of being there was fairly uneventful, and I I don't remember too much about it. Um, In stark contrast to that, the next piercings that I got a couple years later were my second and thirds, also on my lobes, but this time my mom took me to a legit... uh, tattoo and piercing shop in West Hollywood, and it was a totally mind cha- um, mind-blowing experience. I remember thinking everyone there was so cool and nice and also intimidating, and I just wanted to be exactly like them, covered head to toe in mods. There was a really big community aspect in that shop. There was a guy there with his boyfriend getting his nipples pierced, and he was so nervous, but everyone there was really invested in this process, and we were all hyping him up, and we're so excited. And it was just so cool. It was I'd never been in an environment like that or an atmosphere like that, and for a 13-year-old kid, it was monumental. I didn't get any more piercings for a few years after that. I got just a helix piercing at some random little shop on the Venice boardwalk in L.A. Uh, It was done crooked, and I didn't like the way that it was healing, so I just took it out and let it close up. Um, I got my rook pierced a few years ago kind of on a whim. I wanted my industrial done, but I didn't have the right anatomy, so I went with a rook, and I ended up really liking it. I like that it's kind of hidden. Um... After that, a couple more years had passed, and I got my eyebrow. Both with my rook and eyebrow, they're kind of spontaneous piercings that I got at a time when my life felt really chaotic, and I just felt really out of control of everything that was happening around me. Um, And they were really grounding experiences for me to reconnect with myself, kind of check back in, feel more present in my body. Um, And since then, I've... only other piercings I've gotten were my septum and my nostril, which I got both within the past few months since I've started working here. Those were both piercings I've wanted for a really long time, but people told me wouldn't look good, or I was self-conscious of my nose and didn't want to draw more attention to it. Uh, After getting them, I can say that I feel more confident in myself and a lot happier with all these insecurities 
am happy in making those choices for myself and not listening to what other people said. So I love all my piercings and I'm really happy with all of them. So I'll delete the other one. Hey everyone, we are here with my coworker. I'm Kara. Kara, can you tell me a little bit more about your piercing journey? Yeah, so my journey with piercing started when I was about five or six. Um, I got my ears pierced because everyone around me had them pierced, and I knew that it symbolized coming of age, so I was really, really excited about it. Um, I don't really remember much except for I knew that I wanted it. Um, <laughs> I know that I was scared, but afterwards I was immediately excited again, so it was just kind of one of those. It, it, it was just a really intense first time experience being so young and knowing that I wanted it, um, but before I get into my other piercings, I just want to disclose that it was not a safe or efficient way of going about it, and I would never recommend this to anybody, um, but most of my piercings I did do on myself because I didn't grow up with a lot of money, and I lived with a parent who grew, or, and I, I grew up around family who didn't agree with body modifications or like piercings or anything like that. So my first face piercing I got, I was 12 or 13, um, it was my nose. I got my nose pierced. And then from there I just like kept wanting more. So I decided that I wanted to get my lip pierced. Um, and then over the years after getting that done around 13, 14, I just kept piercing my lip multiple times in various spots. Um, um, around 14, I decided that I did want to start stretching my ears, so I did get my ears to be pretty big. They were, um, they were around 5 eighths, a little bit bigger, but then I had some issues with them because I wasn't taking care of them, and I had to take them out, but I just recently started restretching them again. Um, I have had my eyebrow pierced when I was 14, um, multiple times too, because it kept falling out, so I kept redoing it. Um, I had a horizontal eyebrow at one point, which, uh, I didn't get to keep that long just because it wasn't pierced. The person, he didn't, uh, he didn't do it properly. Uh, they actually used the wrong kind of jewelry that should have been for your, your horizontal eyebrow. They used a curved barbell and they should have used a surface bar, so it didn't stay in. Um, so I don't have that one, but then I have my second nostril that was done at that same time. I still have that one, and that was when I was 20, uh, so that was about two years ago. Um, that one's still going strong. I might take it out and redo it just because the it's a little bit funky, but um, other than that, um, I had my belly button pierced when I was 16. That was my first professional piercing, but uh, again, I wasn't taking care of it. I didn't know any better at that age. Um, so it ended up rejecting about four months after I got it done. Um, I just recently had to take my dermal out. I had that pierced too, but I'm going to have to redo it just because there were some slight issues with it. Um, but other than that, that's basically it. I've just had a bunch of various lip piercings. I had a couple of ear piercings. Uh, my eyebrow, my belly button, and I want to say that's it. That's basically it for all the piercings that I've had. So I know you're excited to start piercing. Um, do you want to explain why that's the career choice you've made? Well, one of the reasons why I want to pierce is because I do take self-expression very seriously. Um, I believe that you do deserve to be happy with your own body and if you do have the ability to turn it into a canvas for art, I feel like you should do that, you know, for art and for projects. And getting pierced is the perfect way to be able to create your own voice without even speaking. Um, that was just an issue that I've always had my whole life, especially with my mom, me always wanting to do something to alter my appearance in ways that made me feel more comfortable and confident within myself. Um, I was never allowed to do, or I got in trouble for doing it, or someone was making fun of me, and I just, I, I just feel like, you know, like, I want to be able to help bring people's visions to life, and also help educate them in the process, so that they know that they're being well taken care of, and they know that they're doing it in an efficient and safe m matter, because you know, I've just, I've done all the, the, 
the things that you should not do. Um, I, I know from firsthand experience, I've witnessed a lot of botched, messed up piercings or things that weren't done properly or things that ended up getting infected and how that can play out over time if you don't take care of it. And I just kind of, you, you know, it. I also want to be able to like share that intimate experience with somebody because mm-hmm. a lot of times it is a, it's it's a sign of like taking your body back you know if something traumatic has happened in your life or or you've gone through experiences like myself where someone says that that doesn't look good on you mm-hmm. or like you shouldn't have that mm-hmm. or they just have different beliefs in yourself you know and it's just being able to be confident in yourself and be happy with who you are and be happy with how you look and if you believe that putting a piece of jewelry inside of your body makes you more happy just something minor like a tiny little nose stud like that just makes all the difference in how you feel about yourself and Mm -hmm. i feel like that's the most important thing so i feel like if you want to do that you should be able to do it safely and do it with someone who who really is passionate about that and someone who can you know educate you on how to take care of it and like the different t- kinds of styles of jewelry that you can wear in it and just how to be able to expand that in ways that you're comfortable with yourself. So that's just kind of, I know I've been rambling for a while, but that's just sort of my story and who I am and what I want to accomplish. And yeah, I know it's not all that interesting, but I got a lot of really goofy piercing stories. If you ever <laughs> want to hear more about them, I'm here to ramble to you, but I know that they weren't all that interesting, but that's just me so thank you for listening thank you for taking the time to let me talk about that a little bit yeah Yeah. thank you so much yeah thank you all right everyone well that wraps it up for our first episode i am so excited to get this podcast up and running please feel free to check out our future episodes the next episode we have we're going to be going over the history of piercings in episode three we'll be going over why people get pierced my name's Indy, and those were my co-workers, Sim and Kara, and I hope you have a great day. Thank you so much. <laughs>